It was down here, 1974. I was working on a social documentary project about railroad tramps. The project lasted 10 years. And I met a lot of tramps and I met a lot of people and I took a lot of photographs and I gave a lot of photographs away to those tramps. Anyway, in 2001, I, I finished the project in 1983. And in 2001, I decided to come down here one last time and look around again with the camera. And I'm walking around by the railroad tracks over here and a voice calls out, Hey, Mr. Picture Man, where are you going? And I knew the voice instantly as a friend. And I turn around and there he was. I hadn't seen him since 1974. He came up and he hugged me, almost broke my shoulder, hugging me with one arm. And the other arm, he reached in his pocket and he pulls out this picture. <laughs> and he blew me away. This is a picture I made right here where we're sitting in 1974. This picture is. I made that picture in 74 and I gave it to him. And he's carried it in his pocket for 27 years as a railroad tramp, life on the road. That hard, hard road that kills most men in five years. But this man's not an alcoholic, he's a super tramp. He did it for 27 years and he carried my picture with him all that time. I couldn't believe it that he still had it in his pocket. And he told me he cherished it. During the bad times, he would, he would take it out and look at it, and it always brought a smile to his lips, he told me. And in the good times, there was a lot of good times for him. He had a good life. But in the good times, he'd take it out and show it off to his friends. And that gave him a lot of joy. But the big surprise to me was to see how much value a picture had for someone and how it affected their lives so much. I never had any idea that a photograph could mean so much to someone. And I never saw a photograph in worse condition than that one. How many times has he pulled it from his pocket for a smile? What is the value of a photograph to a man who seemingly has nothing? But he's a super tramp, like I say. Give me the clothes on my back and a jug of water and put me down anywhere and I'll find enough scrap metal and copper wire in a day to keep feeding myself for a month. No problem. I go anywhere, when I please, where I please, as I please, and I answer to no one. And he can survive. And there's very, very few people who can do that. And he knows that. And that's what gives him pride in himself and happiness. He knows he can do what most men can't do. Drop him anywhere and he'll survive. And he's carried this picture, which meant so much to him, and gave me proof that what I'm doing as a photographer and where I aim my camera is very important. And here's proof of it. What that photograph meant to that person in all those years. And here I am at the spot where I made this photograph in 74, and it's 2014, 40 years later. And I'm still thinking of my friend holding the picture in his hands. Just a tramp, a wonderful friend, a wonderful guy who lives a horrible life on the outskirts of society, shunned by most people. We're told, keep away from them. They're dirty, they're bums, they're criminals, they're on the run. I found out something different in all the years that I worked with them and became friends with them. They're just our fathers or our brothers or our cousins who have had a hard shock in their life and it forced them to that road, that bad, bad road. The three things are going to get you. Either the yard bulls are going to beat you to death, or the big steel wheels of the train are going to take your legs off and let you bleed to death by the right of way, or another predator tramp is going to sneak up beside you and lay one up beside your head, and bye-bye, you dead. But this man carried my picture for 27 years and survived all that. Now there's a Superman for you. And I was there. And I lived it, and it was proof of what I'm doing is a glorious thing in my mind, a powerful thing. That in just a fraction of a second, I made that photograph 
which meant so much to this man. That's what it is, and everybody has the power. Everybody can do this. They put their mind to it and point their camera in the right direction with conviction of what you're doing is a powerful and wonderful statement for humanity. If my pictures can give a better understanding, a more compassionate understanding of these tragically abused people who exist on the outskirts of society, wandering, trying to find themselves, trying to lose something, they've been shocked. The war, the woman, the bottle, something put them down there, but they're really wonderful people. And they seem to really enjoy photographs. <laughs> I was in shock when I made this photograph, but I'll tell you what, I, was, I came right back to my senses and I said to myself, what do I need? What do I need for this? So I put out my three pieces of advice, the beginner pieces of advice I give to people. First thing is, what are you selling? What do you need to sell it? And what do you need to get rid of that will damage it? Well, what I'm selling is trying to, in one picture, show the effect that this man carried this photograph in his pocket for 27 years. Now, the condition of the photograph speaks to that. <clears throat> I did not want to include his face because in all my studies of the tramps and all my photograph photographing of them, there were no names. We respect their privacy. There's no names, maybe nicknames, but no names. And so I thought, if there's no names, there should be no faces. Now, I knew if I included his face, that would put the picture way far away, and his face would detract from this. So the two most important things to me are just his hands still holding the tattered photograph. The tattered photograph gives testimony to how many times he's pulled it from his pocket. And so it's still in shock from whatever happened to me, him hugging me and pulling that out, I made this photograph. Of course, I focused on his hands, they're about the same distance apart. And he's not even visible in the photograph. And it was made right here, but everything's changed now. No more New York junk company. All the other people have died. <clears throat> Wonderful people. And they were comrades in the wanderings of that very dangerous place on that hard road. And I got to be friends with them. I got to be known as the picture man by a bunch of people that rode those trains. And I, I'm so pleased about that, that I was able to give them pictures and how much it meant to them and how much it means to me now having this picture and sharing it with you. And I knew how to get close and I still know how to get close and that's where my workshops come in. I'm going to have a special workshop here in Los Angeles on March 1st. It's all about getting back to film. 35 millimeter camera, 50 millimeter lens, 400 speed black and white film and a day with me and Dino in the streets of L.A. We're going to have a celebration. That's all we're going to talk about and do for the entire day. We're going to put everything on the line. We're going to go for it. And we're going to prove that getting used to the film and the film camera and the simplicity of its controls and the importance of its controls will lead the digital photographer to take fewer pictures but more effective pictures. We're hoping that way. I think it's a great idea for anybody interested in documentary photography, street photography, to start off with a film camera. Each shot is precious. I haven't changed to digital yet. I'm too old for the changeover, and people expect uh, silver fiber-based prints from me, traditional photographs, and I don't crop. That's why I have the black line, so I'm kind of committed to this. But I'll give you a tip. This is the finest camera that was ever made in my book. I've been using them for 30 years. It cost $100. Nikon F3, 50 millimeter, 50 millimeter F2 Nikkor lens. You know that the slower lenses are, are much better and sharper than the faster lenses. Oh, oh, you didn't know that? Yeah. And they're half as priced. This is a $40 lens. <laughs> I buy everything used. You can't get a sharper lens than this. I, you know professional for 44 years, used all kinds of cameras, Germans, Japanese, 4x5, you name it. Hey, $100. What's your excuse? Join me on March 1st. Get one of these. If you're done with it and you go back to digital, give it to some kid. But join me on March 1st and, and, and maybe you could have something like this happen to your life. A guy comes up and hugs you after 27 years, pulls out this photograph. What are you kidding? <laughs>